In this lesson, we're gonna learn about something called view properties, which are gonna be essential for us to be able to have this kind of behavior here where we can click on one of our trips and have that trip information appear in a different view. In our case, in a more details view. So what we need to do to start is create a new view here, which is gonna hold all of the details about a particular trip. So I'm gonna head over to my app manager here and just create here a new mobile view. Simply call it a trip. And this can be a scrollable view. And then right away, I'm going to add a app bar to this view. I'm going to set it to be large. And what I wanna do, I wanna replace this title here with the name of the trip that we are going to display within this view. So this dynamic expression needs to change. And any other content that I add to the page, like for example, a text element, this somehow needs to display as its dynamic data source, the trip summary. And where am I gonna get that from? So for us to understand this, let's just step away from the computer for just a moment. Here's our trip view. And I want you to think about our trip view as having in it a little slot, just like a battery compartment. We were gonna plug a battery into this trip. And this little slot, instead of taking a battery, is going to take a trip from our database. Okay, so by plugging in this trip into this slot, we allow the trip view to access it. So if this is our trip view scaled up, I want you to imagine that our trip view has in the side of it a little window or a door through which we can pass a trip from our database, a trip data type. And that's very important because we may have on our trip view some elements like our text element, maybe another text element here that wants to display the trip's date. And those elements can pull through as a dynamic data source, the content from the trip data type that is inside of the view. So this little doorway here, this passage, if you will, that we can pass a trip through, this is what we call a property. It is a method that we can use to provide data into a view. And once it's inside the view, well then we can do whatever we want with it within that view. So let's jump into Bubble and see how this works. So with the view selected, we just hit add new property. We give our property a label because we may have more than one in future. And then we just choose what type or rather what category of input is this. And nine times out of 10, you'll be using this dynamic value option, which is going to let you choose in this field type drop down from all of the data types that you have in your database, as well as the basic types that you have as well. So in our case, we're looking to pass a trip into this view. And then we get a few other options here, which we're just gonna ignore for now. We don't actually want this to be optional. We always want to enforce there being a trip being passed into this view. So I'm gonna hit add. And now what we can do, if we go and we look at our app bar title again, if I go and I modify this dynamic expression, if I look at the trip view, that's this entry here, you see that I now have access to the trips trip. It's a little bit confusingly worded there. This of course is the, we call this like the trip details view. And that would make this maybe a little bit more intuitive to read. So we're looking at the trip details trip, that of course being this property that we just created. And once we have the trip, well, then we can unpack whatever fields that we want, whatever values that we want from within that trip. Because of course, a trip, just like any data type, is simply a collection of data. 
living or organized inside of these various fields. And now here comes the magic step is if we go back to our trips view, this is where we're going to be triggering the appearance of this trip details view. We've got one of our vertical list item here entries. And so when the user clicks on this entry within the list, we want to show the trip details view. So I'm going to, with this vertical list item selected, I'm going to add a workflow. And that workflow is going to use a navigation system that we're already familiar with, which is going to a particular view. And we want this view to open in a stack because I do want, once we have opened one of our trips in a view, I do want to make use of that native back functionality where we go back to the previous view in the stack. So we are going to use stack navigation and the view that we're going for here is trip details. But now look what happens once I select this. We now get this window, this door, this passageway, this property for the trip appearing. And we can now populate this. And of course, what trip do we want to pass in to the view when it's opened? Well, the trip that was clicked, right? The trip that was clicked within this list. And so since this action, go to view trip details, is actually living inside of a workflow triggered by this element, vertical list item, we actually have access to the trip living inside of this vertical list item. So if I go back into the action here, you'll see what I mean. We can access here the current items trip. That is the trip within this entry in the list of trips. And notice here, if I right click and I clear this out, notice how we have an issue. And that issue is telling us you need to fill out the trip. And that is precisely because, if we go back to our trip details view, this property that we had on the trip details view, which I can edit by clicking this pencil icon, does not have optional ticked. If we tick this and I hit save, that issue goes away. So we're essentially creating guardrails for ourselves as the developer here by not making this optional. We're telling our future selves that actually this trip details view isn't gonna work unless you provide a trip. So we'll set this back to be the current items trip. And we can test this out on web as well by logging in as a user who has a bunch of trips. So what I can always do is go under this app data section and then go under all users. And these are the test users that we have in our database so far. I can actually hit run as here and that's gonna load up the web preview for the application logged in as that user. So I can actually test this. If I click a new trip, we should see and we do that trip details view and notice here how the title is being filled in dynamically. And if we had other things here within the trip details view, like for example, in this text element, we could show if we go via that trip property, we could show the summary for the trip. And if we make sure that for any of the trips that we are accessing here, we add some test information you can always just do this, just jump into the app data view just to add some test data to test with. And then if we refresh our preview mode here, you'll see there is the dynamic summary for this trip. So that's view properties. And in the next lesson, we're going to tidy up our trip details view and learn a little trick for designing new views, new interfaces like this one in our mobile app.